Welcome back. In this lesson, moving forward, I'm going to demonstrate how to create your own images. We have been working with existing images, right, like Nginx and so forth, and we've been pulling it in Docker and creating images based on existing code. What if you have your own code, or let's say you want to use a certain repository and then create images and build your own, in fact. You have your own program, your own application. How do you go about doing that? So in this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a Docker file, okay, and then provide instructions in that file, and then based on that file, we'll execute it so that it'll run the commands within that file and create the image for us. And then later on, we'll use the build or docker build command to build our images, okay? So in this project, I'm going to walk you through step by step how to create your own images. So currently there are about a dozen different set of commands which Docker files can contain to have Docker build an image. And we'll take a look at most of these commands as we build a Docker file. I'll walk you through commands such as from, maintainer, cmd, and so forth. And we can use any text editor to create a Docker file. So first things first, let me go ahead and in fact get to our VM instance. Of course, I can use the Cloud Shell, or I can just verify by going to Compute Engine. Make sure you're logged on to your Google Cloud Platform, by the way, right? So you make sure you're signed in. All right, so here's our Ubuntu machine. It's the VM. I'm going to go ahead and connect to this machine. So click on the SSH button to connect. I'm going to move this in the center here. All right, great. So once we have our prompt right I'm gonna first go ahead and create a directory so that's mkdir it's a standard command I'm gonna call it let's say docker file or let's maybe give it a different name so I'm gonna create a directory my own image how's that okay all right so once the directory is created let me navigate to this directory. So cd my own image. And if I were to do a list here, ls here, notice nothing is here. So next I'm going to do the Docker file. So touch Docker file. Make sure the D is capital, by the way. And then if I were to do the ls, it simply shows me that there's a Docker file that is now present. So once we have the Docker file created, next we need to use this Docker file and provide a set of instructions. Well, how do we go about doing it? So you can use any text editor. You can use Sublime. You can use Eclipse. You can use any text editor, OK? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, in fact, the editor that's built in. So it's easier sometimes to work with while you're giving commands or creating images and containers and whatnot. It's easier to work right within the shell as opposed to go out there and open up other programs, right? Of course, as web developers and programmers, you tend to make things simple and fast. All right, so I'm going to use the editor. I'm going to bring up the editor. I'm going to say VI. I'm going to say Docker file. And what this is going to do is open up the Docker file into the editor. Okay, here's the editor. And I'm going to provide some resources as to how to use this editor. I'm also going to give you the list of commands within the resource section, okay? So you don't need to remember all of these commands. You can always reference these commands and take a look at them. All right, so this is where we are going to build our own file and tell Docker or provide instructions to Docker what needs to go and what needs to be executed, okay? In other words, this is where we are going to create our own image. So first, I'm going to start off with the from command here. So the from and the Ubuntu. And I believe we're using 16.04. So the from directive is one of the most crucial amongst all other for Docker files. Okay, And this is one of the first things that we do basically defines the base image to use to start the build process okay and it can be any image including the ones that you've already created previously 
So for example, if a from image is not found on the host, right, on the Ubuntu machine, Docker will try to find it and download it from Docker image index. So it needs to be the first command declared inside a Docker file. Okay. So now you know what the from directive does. All right, next will be the maintainer command. And one of the commands that can be set anywhere in the file, it doesn't have to be in the second line, for example. And what it does is simply declares the author name, right? For example, although it'd be better if we declared on top this non-executing command. So the maintainer command is the non-executing command simply declares the author, hence the setting the author field of the images, it should be nonetheless after from, right? So it's a good practice to use after from. So I'm going to go ahead and type maintainer. And of course, name goes here. And then if you want, you can also provide an email address or whatever. Perfect. So the first instruction is the from directory. Then we have the maintainer. The next set of command is the run, for example. So I can say run and then I'm going to update. So apt dash get update. So make sure everything is current. So it'll be simply a run command. You can have multiple runs also, right? So if you need to install, let's say, other software or other app that you have on GitHub, for example, you can do that as well. So I'm going to use as the first command here after maintainer is the run and what that's going to do is just simply get an update for the current state all right next here I can specify additional run commands right and that could be anything so for example I can do the install for example and basically what this run apt get update does is simply updates the repository source list okay that's all this run command does for us. So for example, next I can say something like run and then use our git repository and then clone. Let's say, what do I want to clone, right? So I need to provide a URL, but I'm not sure what the URL is. So let's go ahead and let me go and open up a new browser. And in fact, let's see what's behind me. So here's the Docker library right so for example if i wish to clone this particular git i can simply use the url that's available here okay so i can just copy this control c bring up our editor and simply paste it all right once i have this command all right next i can do other of course keep building the instructions as i move forward right so for instance, if I do something like run echo, and this is something that I want to print out, my Docker file, or rather image, and this goes in the quotation, I can also provide a list of directory or a path if need be, for example. So I can do something like, let's say user share my image dot or just my image and then let's do the index.html okay and before index.html I'm going to go ahead and use the HTML here as well all right perfect so once I'm done I'm going to use another command called expose right and this is going to expose to the port basically which is port 80 default port you can change the port and depending upon the application you're running if it's using a certain specific port then you need to specify that port as well okay so once my file is created let's say i've created this file right and i need to save it so i'm going to go ahead and save it so use the escape key on the vi editor and then to save it i'm going to use in caps two z's and this is going to save the docker file next we're going to execute this right so i'm going to say sudo docker and here's our build command, right? So this will build the actual image for the Docker file. Specify a tag. And I'm going to equal this to, let's say, clay123. And then my own image. All right. Once I'm done, 
let me go ahead and execute this and it's going to start building the process right it's going to get the archive from Ubuntu which is run the update first that was one of our first command and then of course execute the rest of the instructions let me go ahead and edit the docker file that we created so I'm going to say touch docker file make sure we have the file here perfect just do again vi docker file so it takes me back to the editor and I'm going to remove this part here and in fact I'm going to say run maybe we'll just do a WordPress install I'm going to say run apt get install WordPress okay just to make things easier and simpler for you so you really understand how to work with the docker file and how to bring in let's say WordPress in this instance and create the image later on so we're doing it to get the update and then we're doing it to do the install for the WordPress okay so save it again that's shift ZZ all right I need to hit the escape key first perfect save it and now let's run the file again so bring up my command here so it's sudo docker build specify the tag perfect let's enter and it's going to run the commands again and notice in this instant following new packages were also installed okay let me scroll up just to verify there's a wordpress themes the following additional packages will be installed it ran the installed wordpress running in reading package list perfect let's verify our packages so i'm going to say sudo docker images and we have our clay test ngx image and here's the wordpress perfect so it did install okay so this way we can now use the docker file and in fact create our own images or use the text editor and then run our own code for instance so another example could be something like you want to create an image to install mongodb and the way you would do it is you would simply create an empty docker file right you define the file and the purpose of course using the from set the base image to use define the author update the application repository list right we did the get update and set the arguments and commands for downloading mongodb set the port using the expose command and of course save the file and then build your first image so practice creating a docker file and try to start off with simple examples and then as you move along you can build your docker file as much as possible so once the image is created of course the next step is to create the containers and then the following step would be to move things to the online repository and then use it within your cluster and so on okay so that's the concept so i hope this helps practice and let's move to the next lesson